Hello and welcome to ePathshala lecture series for MARC students. In this particular module we will be seeing about planting design and uh, with respect to one of the components of planting design we shall see today about the visual composition uh, of plants or uh, to be more specific to be uh, the visual composition using plants. So, we shall see this module under four uh, objectives. One we would see what it means by the visual composition of plants, then we would see the principles of visual composition and also understand a few of these kind of principles like contrast and harmony as well as balance, how to balance using plants, we would see them in detail. First visual composition using plants, visual composition could be regarded as the visual grammar of planting design. So, how do we design using plants? How do we arrange uh, plants with respect to the, uh, the designed visual that we are looking at? Where to place a plant? How to place? What comes in front? What comes at the back? What are the components of the foreground, uh, the background, the contrasting colors, the contrasting textures? And uh, there are a lot of different elements, lot of different plant materials that we have. Each of them have their own unique structure and uh, and also each of them have their own unique growth habits and uh, flowering habits. So, they differ uh, in a lot of ways. So, how do we compose using uh, these kind of plants? So, the composition is needs to be done in a proper way so that the uh, designed intent does not uh, not only performs functionally, but also aesthetically and it is uh, visually pleasing to the eyes of the uh, user. And uh, it is not something that is very exclusive to planting design, but also uh, it can also be uh, these kind of principles can also be applied in different fields of design like uh, painting, photography, sculpture, any kind of visual art and uh, in which all these forms can be analyzed and by composition and some principles are common to them all. So, when it comes as a matter of design, uh, we could see that uh, there are a lot of overlapping principles. Uh, like balance or we need to have contrast, we, we need to give the right contrast, we need to make sure that there is proper harmony within uh, you know, the elements in the composition that we do, whether it is a visual art or even photography or even here in this context of planting design. We have lot of uh, different uh, elements which needs to be brought together in unison. Like you see in this picture, you can see a lot of these kind of uh, a visual element like this where you have a house and you have the plants there and how do we arrange the plants with respect to the scale, uh, the, the house, the, the medium sized plant, the tall plant and we have, we see a gradation here. So, there is a balance of the taller plants and also the foreground also we can see there is a right uh, uh, lower ground level of ground covers, some are ground keeping and uh, some are uh, uh, middle medium height. And also you can see the potted plant and in that way uh, the entire visual, the way that we look perceive an elevation completely works together and uh, we can understand uh, how we can arrange the plant. So, we do not do these by uh, mere instincts, but uh, it is good for us to understand the first certain uh, principles uh, by which we could uh, get a very good uh, composition done. Uh, so, that the visual character is enhanced uh, by means of these principles. Nick Robinson in his book uh, uh, Planting Design Handbook, uh, he writes about five different kinds of principles that actually uh, talk about uh, the how we achieve these principles uh, in planting design. And uh, he lists these kind of principles like harmony and contrast, balance, emphasis, sequence and scale. So, these are the uh, important principles uh, I would say with respect to planting design so that uh, so that the visual character of a particular planting design is uh, brought out very effectively. Uh, it is important that we uh, come to a common ground as to uh, understand what are the different kinds of principles that are needed uh, to visually compose any kind of uh, planted environment. An understanding of these will allow us to analyze the visual grammar of any planting association and help us with both design method and creative in inspiration. So, what do these principles do is that they lay a kind of they give us a kind of framework based on which we could uh, we could actually uh, use them in a design process 
and uh, make them uh, as uh, uh, elements or instruments which would help us to uh, give the right kind of visual arrangement to any particular place uh, so that it functions not only functionally but also gives a very aesthetically uh, pleasing uh, uh, visual or the landscape or whatever we see uh, to the user. So, first we would see about uh, one of the characters, uh, one of the principles of visual composition that is harmony and contrast. So, though these two are very uh, are, are different. Uh, uh, different in terms of the way they uh, mean, but still they are brought together uh, in, a, uh, in, in, in a particular way. So, that uh, uh, though different types of materials or plants are brought together, it is also important that uh, a certain kind of uh, unity exists when uh, different kinds of plant materials are brought together and that is where we bring harmony together and at the same time. Uh, the contrasting characters of the plant material which is being used is also brought down very effectively. So, harmony is a quant quality of relatedness. So, there is the, though there are different types of materials, though there are different types of plant materials, there is also a quality of relatedness, they, they kind of relate with each other, maybe with respect to color, maybe they may they would they might be uh, uh, in harmony uh, with respect to growth habits or flowering habits or flower color, there might be some quality which would bring them uh, you know together in harmony, some characteristic that could be found uh, in these different materials uh, as existing. So, that is uh, that is harmony as we see it as a uh, visual composition uh, principle. So, it is found between similar plant forms, similar textures, similar characters of line and closely related colors. The closer the relationship between the aesthetic qualities of associated plants, the greater the harmony. So, one has to uh, kind of identify the aesthetic quality of a particular plant and when one who chooses another plant, uh, the way to achieve a harmony is to look for that particular aesthetic quality. If it is available in a certain measure uh, in the other plant, so one can use that plant uh, uh, with the former plant, so that a certain degree of uh, harmony is being achieved over here. So, we could see that uh, in this particular picture that it looks uh, the scene looks very harmonious and uh, whereas, we could see there is a difference between uh, the height of plants. For example, you could see a very lush green carpet with a lot of white flowers uh, that you can see over the in this in this lower uh, lower area. Whereas, we can see the tall barks of the trees with very sparse uh, leaves that are there. So, there there is a though there is a quality of relativeness uh, in terms of color, in terms of the green, there is a difference in terms of how it is expressed. One is uh, like a carpet, the other one is very transparent or I would say it is more translucent and uh, very airy uh, in its one forms so a thick carpet in the lower ground one uh, expresses itself as a very airy element uh, uh, above the ground level. So, there is a there is a element of harm harmony that is found uh, in this picture with respect to what we could see here. So, the closer the relationship between the aesthetic qualities of associated plants or any kind of plants the greater the harmony. So, one would slightly try to uh, work with some prints some uh, qualities that are uh, kind of uh, identical. Uh, and also which could be found in both of these uh, type of plant materials or the, the number of plant materials that one chooses here. So, as it becomes increasingly close, it approaches identity, but in identity harmony would be lost because it depends for its aesthetic impact on the simultaneous perception of both similarities and differences. So, what, is, what this means is that, so once we start uh, looking, we start looking at this picture and we see a totally uh, single harmonious uh, composition. But if I could, if I could just zoom in into this picture, if I could go very closely, then I start to see, uh, see this ground cover as flowers and as the grass. So, there is a kind of identity which comes in. I start to identify what is the shape of the grass, how it is standing, how vertical it is, which is prostrate, which is vertical, how the, what is the leaf uh, sill out, all these things starts to express. So, as we, as one starts to go closer, you can start identifying qualities as such. So, in that case harmony is lost. So, it also it is dependent on the 
the distance at which uh, something is being viewed at and uh, how much of identity uh, is, uh, is, is one able, to, how much of things is one able to perceive when one looks at that particular picture. So, uh, it is also important to understand the, the concept of viewing distance when one starts to uh, look at this particular aspect and, uh, and there should be a very careful uh, demonstration of uh, how one works on the similarities and uh, differences in the uh, that is that one can identify in a particular uh, planting composition I would say. So, that uh, not much of uh, different identical things, but something which could relate to each other and be found in a very harmonious setup. So, the pleasure of harmony rests not only in similarities between things but also in the balance between identification and differentiation. So, the one should be able to uh, find a common quality, but at the same time should be able to appreciate uh, the differences that are available in it. Just as we understand everything we perceive in terms of similarity or difference to the familiar. To make sense of the world, we pick out a pattern of similarities as different from its background or conversely a pattern of differences arising from the undifferentiated. So, there are a lot of things uh, that could be uh, looked at in terms of plant material, they could be similar in color, they might be green, but they would have different flowering habits, one might be pink. You could see the, diff the there is a harmony in terms of the texture of the plant that you can see here, but uh, you, can, you can see the color is different. So, there are a lot of things, so it is a matter of identification as well as the quality of being able to differentiate how we uh, start to look at particular things. So, there is a we always try to relate what we actually uh, know and uh, when we see something new we try to relate it with something else and try to understand as to what it is and how it is and how it is expressed to the things we know when we compare it in relation to the other one. So, harmony and contrast go together, they, they are not mere polarities and neither can exist without each other. So, there would be a certain uh, a degree of relatedness but at the same time there is also a certain degree of differentiation that we could see in plants whether it could be it, it could be in any kind of uh, characteristic that we could observe uh, in this. So, they, they might be uh, different characteristics altogether, but in a certain way they are they, they are dependent on each other. So, that uh, they are made to be dependent on each other, so that uh, the, the final picture comes together uh, in unison. Looking at contrast in detail. Contrast is found between different forms, different qualities, direction of line, texture and color. So, as I told uh, you that there are different qualities or characteristics based on which we can see like line or texture or color. Uh, when we saw the visual uh, characteristics of plants, we saw these all these are different types of characters that are available here and contrast does not necessarily imply uh, any kind of conflict. Uh, it may be attractive there could be some kind of differences, there could be a happy contrast coming from complementary mutually supportive relationship between widely different characteristics. So, it is some in some areas these kind of contrasts do exist and uh, they could be appreciated, but, uh, but that makes an interesting picture. So, you could see here there is a green carpet which is there at the background, but in the front there is also the green smaller clumps and not only these clumps of plants, but also in the same way you could see them arranged on a completely different texture, uh, texture bed of maybe wooden bark that is there and the boulders which are there. So, the trees and the, the, the smaller clumps, plant clumps as well as the wooden bark have uh, contrasting uh, qualities of color, but at the, uh, in terms of texture they both kind of uh, exhibit the same kind of texture that is there. So, these are the things which actually make uh, something the visuals very interesting and one could uh, bring in a completely different character, uh, completely different quality as such and try to bring in uh, that contrast using the same quality uh, of texture also. So, there, there is a there is a same uh, relatedness of texture, but there is a uh, contrast in terms of the color that is brought here uh, by the color that is being used in this uh, uh, planted composition. So, in planting composition we aim to achieve the right balance of harmony and contrast. Contrast between two species will be more visible and have a greater effect if there is a measure of harmony. So, measure of harmony then uh, the contrast will be uh, nicely visible and it will be a comfortable uh, visual feel that one could get if 
if there is a certain measure of harmony. So, this arrangement works well when a contrast in one characteristic such as leaf texture is combined with harmony in other such as leaf colors. We could actually uh, look at this like there is a contrast in form. So, one is a short uh, medium height plant and you have the tall ones, but in terms of the texture it is harmonious, they, everything belongs to a same medium kind of texture. And here you have a, the contrast in texture, but there is also an harmony in form. So, everything is formed as one clump at the lower level. So, you could see there is a contrast in texture, one is fine, one is very coarse and there is you could see the differences, but as as a, as one element, as one single element they have a, they exhibit a harmony in form. So, similarly harmony in flower color appears more satisfactory uh, if it is used to link varied and contrasting form and texture. So, one could use uh, different kinds of uh, colors uh, in terms of flowers and uh, uh, one could kind of use these kind of characteristics to link together all the different elements. So, at the same time one has to be very careful not to exercise uh, too much of contrast because too much of contrast is illegible and uh, there are and they are very related and because the more number of elements we try to see as different uh, as different entities itself, uh, the more number of uh, differentiation uh, starts to come in into the visual picture and that becomes a little more uh, difficult for us to see the planting composition. So, there is a certain sense of harmony that is there uh, in terms of the gradation that is being used here and you know when the when the scene uh, exposes or uh, you know expresses itself here. Uh, it looks like it is very serene, uh, that is because of there is a single texture which is there and which gradually changes from a lighter shade over to a darker shade as it recedes from the uh, foreground to the background. So, that you can see a different single element of texture which is there, the texture is medium and it is slightly grade, but there is a gradation from the lightest uh, plant quality and uh, to be vis uh, visualized as the darker or the darker ones at the rear side. So, there is uh, there is a certain sense of harmony that is there, but uh, one has also been very careful not in this as you see this picture for example, has to be uh, not to use too much of different uh, uh, elements. Uh, so, here in this picture the harmony is brought, out, brought about by the uh, texture, but there is the contrast comes in the uh, colors or even if we could go and say if we could say the degree of the greens uh, that are being used here. Uh, brings about the contrast as such. So, a combination of plants with strong contrast in all its aesthetic characteristics would appear chaotic and we would find it difficult to appreciate the qualities of individual plants and the composition as a whole. Indeed, the restlessness of such a composition would cause constant distraction. This is why restraint is one of the qualities in enduring and refreshing design. So, uh, we have a lot of variety in terms of different colors, different quality, different lines, different textures and uh, when we bring together a compo compo combination of all these different kinds of characters, uh, uh, it is very important to exercise restraint. So, that we get a refreshing design that is at the end of the day uh, that uh, functions very properly, but at the same time is uh, visually very pleasing to the eye and it is very refreshing. So, ultimately that is the goal. Uh, of uh, uh, you know the landscape design intent that we could see here in these kind of projects that could that that are being uh, done in contemporary times. Next, we would see about balance. Balance is another principle that is very important, and uh, balance, as we we could understand in layman's terms, is that it's it's equalization of two particular uh, elements. And uh, in this case, in terms of planting it comes from the relationship between the vegetation masses. How much of uh, massing we done on either side? As we could understand a uh, concept of a balance that there is a fulcrum and there is a center point. So, in the same way the balance in terms of planting is also done or being uh, achieved by, uh, by keeping a kind of fulcrum or an axis and based on this particular axis the kind of massing is done on either side of the uh, of the plant of this axis and and thereby we try and see how to how the balance is being achieved in terms of the visual thing. So, if you see this picture uh, the pathway becomes the axis uh, based on which the balancing is being done. So, even though you could see uh, for example, if you see that this pathway is, is there and becomes the axis, then you the planting is done on either side, the massing is done on either side 
and here we have a slightly taller uh, element here or else the width is very less here. Here you have additional depth, so the depth varies on either side of the uh, axis. But if you could see the, the plants are little bit taller here, but here as we have a lot of depth, so which means that a considerable foreground is being used as a ground cover and then the taller, then the taller plant starts and the balancing is still more done by introducing taller plants here which we would see as we keep moving on. So, it depends on their magnitude, their position and also on their visual energy. So, balance comes from relationship between agitation masses, it depends on their magnitude, their position and their visual energy. The possibility of visual balance implies two things that the parts of a composition have visual force or energy and that there is a fulcrum or axis about that uh, about which that force acts. So, the identification of a particular fulcrum is very important or axis and, uh, and how we kind of arrange uh, the planted material uh, about this axis uh, becomes very critical uh, in a particular visual composition. So, the fulcrum or axis is brought into being and it is being given importance by the way in which plant masses and other elements are placed around it. So, a fulcrum is being arranged and uh, maybe it might be a walkway, it could be a drain channel, it could be a river uh, or else it could be uh, even a highway for that matter, but uh, it is important to identify and based on which the massing is being done on either side and uh, the balance is being achieved. So, uh, and in considering these kind of circumstances, the plant masses are being uh, planned in such a way to achieve this kind of balance in the visual composition. So, because of this vital role of attracting and ordering structuring elements, the axis may become the focus of the space. As I told it could be a river, it could be a nice vista which leads to an entrance pavilion like what we see on screen, it could be something like this and it becomes so the central fulcrum or the axis becomes very critical. The simplest expression of balance is bilateral symmetry. So, uh, there is a strict formality uh, here in this case where the arrangement of planting on one side of an axis is repeated in as its mirror image in its opposite side as we what we could see here. So, there is a certain degree of uh, balance that is being brought in uh, by means of repeating the same kind of elements on either side of the axis that we could see here. So, there are two often uh, two types of symmetry that we could see in a composition. Uh, so, it, it might be different uh, in terms of a circle, but when we consider a particular axis or symmetry, there are always two sides. So, symmetry has been associated with strict formality in design. So, it could be a uh, very proper symmetry which, which cuts a particular space into two equal halves, but that is also another uh, element of asymmetry, uh, where there is which it can split a uh, uh, space into two unequal halves or, or a quadrant into four equal or unequal uh, parts as such. So, the symmetry is based on how the axis is being placed. So, symmetry has been uh, if we say if we consider very strict formal symmetry which considers uh, which cuts a space into two, it has been long associated with strict formality in design. Its abstract ordered patterns are an expression of rational thought and control of form is a demonstration of the power of human technology to shape the materials of the landscape. So, symmetrical form is remarkable because it is contrast with the natural organic forms that develop when no conscious plan is imposed. So, symmetry suddenly gives the very strict expression of form and uh, one could uh, one could see immediately the contrast between the natural uh, expression of plants which is more organic uh, in its nature. Yet, pure symmetry can be seen to emerge from natural forms. It is an intellectual refinement of the underlying patterns of the microscopic world and of the elements of the more relaxed symmetry found in living things. So, there are a lot of uh, it is it is it is something that is um, that is a uh, uh, that is taken from uh, nature and reproduced in a certain way. So, that it has a sense of uh, uh, one could relate uh, that kind of symmetry uh, to the living things that one can see around us. So, balance can also be achieved without symmetry in this case visual stability arises not from replication but by the balancing of the energy of different qualities about the axis or fulcrum. Prominent form may balance coarse texture and assertive lines may balance intense color. What this means is that one can use different characteristics on one kind of a fulcrum on one side of a fulcrum or an axis and a completely different characteristic like a quality or a texture of a plant 
or even for a form of a plant can be used on the other side of the axis and still one could be able to achieve a certain sense of balance like you could see you could see in these uh, areas like you see the symmetry there is a symmetrical balance there is a strict uh, formality of design that we see about an axis whereas here there is a kind of asymmetrical uh, design where on one side there is a prominent form which balances the coarse texture on this so the the leaf uh, structure of this uh, medium height plant is very coarse whereas on this side one could balance on uh, the other side not only by putting uh, uh, not by just repeating a same kind of coarse texture but uh, uh, something that is less coarse at the same time and uh, one a prominent form is being put here sometimes single strong form balances several weaker areas also so so these kind of characteristics can be brought uh, uh, about on either side of the uh, thing so uh, quantity uh, and on one side as well as one one particular element which can match in terms of the massing on the other side so like how we would see like a single plant is striking spot like leaves would balance a group of 3 to 5 smaller plants so these are the ways we could see and understand kind of textures as well as uh, different kinds of uh, character characteristics of plants and uh, bring in a sense of balance between the composition that we could uh, see here and also the energy of balanced elements how uh, some of these things are being placed and uh, maybe the potential energy that results from the positioning of the plant masses so not only in terms of how we arrange on either side of the axis the axis could be a larger scale and uh, the position the altitude the elevational aspects uh, as to where we are placing at what elevation is one placed and how that uh, massing uh, is being brought about uh, in terms of a larger scale so this potential energy is a product of the mass itself and uh, it's also relative to the height and also the important uh, um, aspect of giving prominence uh, by placing uh, placing a particular element in a particular area these things are very important in the uh, visual composition of plants so you could see here that how coarse texture is being brought in uh, in terms of uh, this axis like a step uh, and also in terms of grouping uh, how uh, one could uh, suddenly group three trees on uh, in a single area and try to group uh, bring in a sense of balance into this uh, where a pair of trees are scattered abroad and suddenly you have a grouping of three trees uh, together so as a single uh, entity it looks very balanced and uh, uh, and what brings in that balance is a grouping of uh, trees with a lot of so there is a massing which comes and balances out the scattered uh, masses here as well as prominent form and it could define uh, entry points and uh, other vistas as, as such so balancing is very important and uh, it is balanced by an axis or center it by uh, the symmetry is being brought out and because of which there is a certain kind of equality a uh, visual stability is being brought when we do uh, when we bring in a, a balance as such it may include dynamic elements and exciting contrast but its parts are with uh, held together in uniform uh, in a unified whole so there is a lot of differences that we could see and uh, though these differences are uh, interesting to look at it brings it's all brought together as one picture and uh, and also working with harmony and contrast uh, a uh, sense of balance is being brought to the entire visual landscape as such these masses of energy or energy equalities and stable non symmetrical arrangements are sometimes said to have an occult balance so there are lot of different qualities that you could see here so not only in terms of visual but even from the top how the planting masses is being arranged with uh, closer to the building and uh, even surrounding so there is also a balancing act that is also happens on a uh, larger scale as such so it's very important to identify it as i said it could be at very various different scales as to how we look at it maybe it's an entrance to a building a stepped pathway as such uh, and how plants are being arranged on either sides how form is being brought in uh, in one side of the axis and uh, being able to uh, balance out the entire picture as such uh, a good example of uh, japanese landscapes how texture is being brought in how different forms forms as as such were brought in how shapes were brought in uh, to even though exhibiting different kinds of qualities in terms of textural material but uh, at the same time a certain sense of harmony 
uh, it also exist in terms of uh, contrast. So, this is a, a good example of how uh, some things can be harmonious at the same time uh, we enjoy the contrast that is available in this picture. And at the same way the harmony in terms of uh, color, the green and also at the same time there is differences in shade uh, and uh, the coarseness and the uh, and also there is a harmony in texture also, but there is a gradation, there is a very beautiful gradation in terms of the greens that one could identify. So, visual composition as plants is uh, something that is very interesting and which guides us, uh, uh, guides one as to how to uh, approach this particular, uh, a particular module or a design in a very simple and effective way. So, having studied the characteristics of plants, visual composition becomes the language of expression of the planted medium using the right characters qualitatively, positionally as well as uh, qualitatively. So, there is a quantity also is involved and quality also is involved. So, we can achieve a harmonious planting setup by using different textures, colors, forms by using them rightly and also by planning of the visual frame and also by exercising restraint and uh, balance helps to use the right axis to bring about the right massing of the planted landscape to achieve the design intent. So, these, these becomes very important uh, in terms of how we uh, express our design and how the final design comes out. Thank you.